Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe Hindi, the Android Authority app guy. Bluestacks has been the gold standard for running Android on PC for some time. Now there is a new challenger called Andy Roid. Can the king be dethroned? Let's take a look. Okay, so here's how this is going to go down. We're going to be judging these two applications based on five different things. That is ease of use and setup, gaming, productivity, miscellaneous features, and overall. If at any point you're wondering exactly which one I'm talking about, keep your eye on the lower left hand corner of the screen because I'll have it posted there. For Bluestacks, setting things up was ridiculously easy. You go to the site, you download the application, install it, and go. It's super easy. Once you're inside, you can browse and install various games and access them on the bar at the top. When it comes to ease of use and setting things up, Bluestacks is practically idiot-proof. Andy started out the same way. Downloading and installing the application was easy. I did have a problem actually getting it to run, but thanks to their support, I was able to figure out the problem. Once you actually start it up, it runs like any Android phone or tablet, so the interface is familiar. Andy does get some points back for having a good support staff. They use Facebook as their support page and their people are generally pretty knowledgeable. In fact, shout out to Charlie from Andy because he's the dude that helped me out. Still, at the end of the day, I have to give the victory in ease of use and setup to Bluestacks. It simply doesn't require any effort and it really is just that easy. Of course, one of the main reasons people want Android on their computers is for gaming. Fortunately, both of these emulators support gameplay on Android. In Bluestacks, it appears as though the main focus is for gaming. They don't really recommend any normal applications, and we assume the recommended games are ones that have been tested and work well with Bluestacks. The games run fairly well. You can get ones in the Play Store that aren't listed in the Bluestacks recommendations, but they tend to run a little more clunky than the recommended ones. Andy focuses on an overall experience, so there aren't as many features there for gamers. For instance, Bluestacks has keyboard shortcuts built in for some games, whereas Andy does not. It does play games, and in some cases, like Clash of Clans, it actually plays the game better than Bluestacks in terms of stability. This is especially true for network-based games, which seem to load a lot faster on Andy. Andy does have a remote option where you can use your device as a controller for better gaming support if you so choose. Bluestacks does allow game controller support as well, but it requires a wired controller. Thanks to the fact that it runs a newer version of Android, the remote support, and just general performance, we have to give Andy the win here. There are some people who wish to use Android on their computers for productivity reasons. Here, Bluestacks doesn't fail utterly, but it does come close. It doesn't seem to like to run regular Android applications as well as it does games, and that's a damn shame. As you can see here, there is an excruciating amount of lag when simply typing things in Google Drive. It doesn't recommend any productivity apps, so you have to go out of your way to even find them. Really, Bluestacks wants to be a gaming emulator, and this is an area where it shows. That said, there are a few productivity apps that do work well, so if you need it for something very light like some word processing, it can still work for that. Like we stated earlier, Andy focuses more on a rounded experience, and this is where it shows. The same sort of problems I was having on Bluestacks simply were not present in Andy. The Google Drive lag wasn't present, apps loaded quickly and worked well. It's also worth pointing out that Andy can run things like Hangouts as well as third-party launchers, it can deliver real notifications, and even use widgets. It is worth mentioning that Bluestacks does run on an older version of Android, while Andy runs on a newer version. That means in terms of things like app compatibility, Andy will probably have more applications that are usable than Bluestacks. I think it's pretty clear who the winner is with this one. Andy delivers a more traditional Android experience than Bluestacks, and that makes it a lot better if you're looking to be more productive. We've talked about the big stuff, but what about the little things? Here are the miscellaneous features. Bluestacks is pretty much a what you see is what you get kind of deal. In a small way, simplicity is elegance, and that means there isn't much guesswork. That said, you can sync Bluestacks with your Android devices to sync app data, text, and the like if you really wanted to. You can also sideload applications, which is a fairly simple process. Overall, there are some things, but really not that many. Spoiler, this is the part in the video where Andy really starts to pull ahead. You can do pretty much anything with Andy that you can do with an Android phone. That includes sideloading applications, putting files on there for from your computer if you need to, real file browsing, and some stuff we mentioned earlier like fully functioning notifications, widgets, and you can even root the thing if you really want to. One of the things I really liked personally was the ability to install third-party launchers. Since it runs pretty much like any other Android device, you can customize it pretty much like any other Android device. So between the custom launchers, wallpapers, widgets, icon packs, etc., you can turn Andy into a little window of customization and really make it truly yours. 
The last thing I want to mention here is the ability to change the specs on Andy. It runs in a virtual machine which is actually customizable. You can open up the virtual box that comes with Andy and give it some extra RAM, change how many CPU cores it has, and various other small things as well. Beware though, this is advanced user stuff, but you can totally go in there and give this bad boy 3GB of RAM instead of the 1 and actually improve the performance. It also runs a higher version of Android than Bluestacks and that means you'll have a higher app compatibility as well as better app stability. Obviously the winner here is Andy and I don't really need to explain why. Overall, picking which one is better really depends on your needs. If you really just need something super simple that plays some light games and you really don't need it to do much else, then Bluestacks is still probably your best bet. After all, like we said earlier, there is an advantage to having simplicity. However, if you're willing to go through the slightly more complicated setup process, then Andy is by far the more full-featured Android emulator. It's way better for customization and productivity, and in some cases, it's even better at gaming. With the power user stuff available like Root and adding resources, Andy is simply a better option for more demographics. If you're wondering, yes, I am saying that Bluestacks has been pretty much thwarted as the go-to Android emulator on PC. If you want to check either of these out, we'll have the links in the video description below. Once again, I'm Joe Hendy from AndroidAuthority.com. While you're here, why not subscribe to the Android Authority YouTube channel? If you want to follow Android Authority, myself, or the rest of the video team, you can find our social media links in the video description below. If you're hanging out for a minute, we have a couple of awesome videos for you to watch right over there and in the video description below for you folks on mobile. Don't forget to check out the written companion in the video description below for more information if you need it. As always, thanks for watching everybody and have a wonderful day.